Hey all, welcome back to another episode. This will be the fourth episode in the Hacking Windows Domain Active Directory AD series. In this episode, we will be hacking a Windows Domain AD environment with Sliver C2. We will be exploring more of the Sliver C2 framework commands and how to navigate through a Windows Domain AD environment network. We will be showing how to set up network pivoting with SOX proxy to support external tooling such as Crack Map Exec, CME, and also SMB Map. We will also be showcasing how to configure TCP pivot on Sliver C2. This means that we will be able to get a reverse shell from another restricted subnet, outbound back to our Kali machine. Before we begin, if you haven't checked out the first few episodes of the Hacking Windows Domain AD series, please check them out first. It will provide more context to the environment and setup. Also, Windows Defender will be turned off. We will be focusing on the usage of Sliver C2 and will not be touching on Windows Defender bypasses. It will be extremely time consuming to come up with Windows Defender bypasses for each of the attack in the attack chain. If you are interested in Windows Defender bypasses, please check out the other videos in my channel whereby I have demonstrated several times on how to bypass Windows Defender. With that being said, let's get started. Alright, we have a HTTPS listener now. Let's generate a sliver implant for that. Generating an implant on Sliver C2 takes a long time as it is by default a stageless binary and hence all of the functionalities and modules are packed into the output. The waiting time will be edited out. Okay, it is done now. Let's transfer the implant binary to our Windows 10 machine and execute it. We will then get a shell from the Windows 10 machine. This will be our initial foothold. Let's interact with our shell using the session-i command. Let's check out the IP configuration. As shown in the output, this Windows 10 machine has two network interfaces, one of which is our Kali machine subnet on the 192.168.10 network, and the other IP is the 10.10.10 subnet, which will allow us to reach the other two Windows servers. We can run the info command and we will get some basic info on our foothold, such as the hostname and the Windows version type. Our current session is under the domain user of Roof Leong. Let's check out Roof. It appears that Ruth Leong is just a basic domain user account with no additional group memberships and privileges. Let's check out the Gemini.local domain first. We can do so using Bloodhound and Sharphound. Let's demonstrate how we can execute Sharphound by using one of the Sliver C2 capability, the execute-assembly command. Execute assembly allows execution of .NET binaries directly in memory. This function is pretty common among other C2 frameworks such as Cobalt Strike and even Metasploit and Metaprater. Let's download Sharphound EXE from the official GitHub page. Now that it is done, let's proceed with the execute assembly command. Let's specify the collection method to be all. Okay, maybe we don't need the dash. Let's try it again. The output looks good. Once Sharphound has completed running, we should get a compressed zip file output that we will be able to upload onto Bloodhound to analyze our target Windows domain environment. Let's download it off the Windows 10 and onto our Kali machine. Upload the zip file onto Bloodhound and let's search for our Roof Leong user. As shown in Bloodhound, we can verify again that Ruth Leong indeed has no additional privileges and is just a normal domain user. She has no reachable high-value targets and also no local administrator access onto any Windows domain computers at all. If you are interested in analyzing viable attack paths on Bloodhound and how to navigate and undertake the attack path practically, please check out episode 1 and episode 2. Alright, so now that we have verified our current access with Ruth Leong, we are basically unable to move anywhere else with it. So, what can we do now? Well, we can enumerate the list of domain users and perhaps perform a password spring attack. We can also attempt to identify users that we can perform Kerberos attack on. There are many ways that with a valid domain user account, we can expand our initial access. In this episode 4, we will be going through SMB network drive enumeration. But we will need to perform privilege escalation, prefs, 
on our current access first. This is because we don't know Ruf Leong's credentials. We only have a shell running as Ruf Leong. This is a very real scenario, getting a reverse shell as a domain user but not knowing the domain user's credentials. So now, let's prefix as this Windows 10 machine first and dump the LSS memory. This should get us Ruf Leong's credentials. We will do so with Sliver C2 Amory function. Amory is pretty cool. Basically, it's like a repo of tools that you can further install and use it directly in Sliver C2. We can check out Amory with the Amory command. As shown in the screen, there are a ton of additional tools you can install with Amory to buff up your Sliver C2 capabilities. In this episode, we will look at Sharp Up. We have demonstrated privilege escalation using Power Up in the previous episode 3. Sharp Up is basically a port over in C Sharp. Sharp Up is able to identify that there is a privilege escalation vulnerability available on the Abyss web service. It appears that we are able to modify the service binary. We will also need to verify if we can restart the Abyss web server service first. Let's see if we can perform a net stop and a net start of the Abyss web server service. Nice. It appears that we can indeed stop and start the Abyss web server service. Now let's exploit this and prefix as ourselves. First, we will need to generate a malicious binary and upload it as the legitimate abyssws.exe service binary. After that, when we restart the abyss web server service, our malicious binary should then be executed instead, with the highest privileges as the local system. Now, let's first rename the legitimate abyssws.exe service binary to something like a .bak file. Awesome. Now, let's generate a new implant to be used as the malicious service binary. We will need to generate a new implant as we will have to specify the format as service instead of the default. Service binaries are slightly different. If we were to use the initial implant, it wouldn't work if we restart the service as the exe file is not configured to be used as a Windows service binary. Let's do that with the generate command again. Alright, now that is done, let's upload it onto the Windows 10 machine. We will need to name it as abysswsexe. Okay, this looks good. Let's restart the abyss web server service. We should get a system shell back. Awesome, we are now running as system on our Windows 10 initial foothold. Privilege escalation was a success. Now that we have system privileges, we can proceed to dump the LSS memory of the Windows 10 machine to get Ruf Leong's credentials. We can probably do so using Sliver C2, but let's demonstrate how we can do that with CrackMap Exec CME. First, let's change the default administrator user password on the Windows 10 machine so that we will know the password value. We can do so as we are running as the system privilege now. Now let's fire up CME. We can verify that we have admin access with the PUN indication in the output. CME has quite a few useful modules that we can use. One of such is this LSASI module. We can use it to dump the LSAS memory of the target machine. Nice. We are able to get Ruf Leong's credentials now. Let's proceed with SMB map to enumerate SMB shared network drives in the Windows domain network. This is very practical and will more than often get very interesting results, especially in big companies. Many times, there will be backup files or application source code available and usually there will be clear text credentials in it. We can enumerate SMB network shared drives in the Windows domain network now with SMB map as we have Ruf Leong's credentials. Now, let's get all the valid IP addresses in the Windows Domain Network. Okay, this should be it. Let's fire up SMB map again with the targets.txt file as target. Before we do that, we will need to set up a SOX proxy first else, our Kali machine will not be able to reach the 10.10 .10 subnet. We can do so using Sliver C2 SOX5 command. SOX5 start. Simple and easy. We will need to make sure that our proxy chain's configuration file is pointing to the SOX5 proxy IP address and port. Let's fire up the SMB command with proxy chains. Looking at the output, we can see that on the Windows Server 10.12, there is an interesting folder that should be investigated the apps backup folder. Let's list the content of the folder with the dash r command in smb map. Alright, 
Now let's download the zip file with the dash dash download command in SMB map. Awesome, we got it. We were able to identify an accessible SMB network share drive and successfully download the zip file using proxy chains over a SOX5 proxy in Sliver C2. Great. One quick way to search for potential credentials is to grab for the string password recursively in the extracted files. Alright, the very first one seems like a valid hit. In a web config file, used as a database connection string, this is very common. We now have an additional domain user account to leverage on. Let's quickly verify if the domain user account MSSQL is valid or not. We can do so using CME again. Let's supply the credentials of the MSSQL domain user that we have just found to see if it works. Okay. This is indeed a valid domain user account. Let's quickly spray the MSSQL domain user account credentials across the Windows domain computers using CME to see if this MSSQL domain user has any administrator privileges onto any Windows domain computers. Nice, we got a hit. We were able to identify that the MSSQL domain user account has admin privileges on the Windows dev server sitting on 10.10.10.12. Let's run the LSC module again to dump the credentials on the Windows Dev Server.12. Nice, we were able to harvest another domain user credentials from the dump, Ricky Chu. Let's check out Ricky Chu Assess on Bloodhound. Okay, this looks good. It appears that Ricky Chu is a domain admin. He is a member of the Privileged Users V2 group, which is a member of the Domain Admins group. Awesome. Now let's use Ricky Chu's credentials to get a shell on the domain controller DC sitting on 10.10. .10. As shown in the CME output over here, Ricky Chu is indeed a domain admin. We now have admin privileges on the DC IP address 10.10 .10 indicated by the pwn output in CME. Now, how can we get a shell on the DC? The DC is in the isolated 10.x subnet and it will not be possible to get a reverse shell back onto our Kali machine which is in the 192.168.10.x subnet directly. In the previous episodes, we were using bind shells to assess the Windows servers in the 10.x subnet, so it was pretty straightforward. In Sliver C2, our payloads are all reverse shells. One way we can configure the Sliver C2 implant to outbound back to our Kali machine is to configure a pivot on the Windows 10 machine we can spin up a TCP pivot on the Windows 10 machine. This will basically create a listener on the Windows 10 machine and it will forward all the TCP pivot traffic back to our Sliver C2 on the Kali machine automatically. Basically, what we need to do is to start a TCP pivot listener on the Windows 10 machine. We will then need to generate a new implant that will call back to the TCP pivot. We should then upload the new implant onto the DC sitting on 10.10 .10 and execute it. We should be able to get a reverse shell on the DC on our Sliver C2. We need to specify the 10.10.10.11 IP address instead of the 192.168.10.x IP address belonging to the Windows 10 machine. We will need to upload the generated implant to the DC. We can use the put file command with CME to do so via proxy chains. This is weird that it didn't work. It should work. Okay, never mind, that is fine. Let's upload from the Windows 10 machine over to the DC instead. Since we have a valid session as the Roof Leong user already on our C2 Sliver session, we can make our life easier by simply adding Roof Leong to the domain admin group. Let's use Ricky Chu's credentials to do that. Let's add Ruf Leong to the domain admins group. We will need to escape the double quotes with backslash. Now that Ruf Leong is a domain admin, we should be able to simply move the TCB pivot implant to the DC on our Windows 10 session. Let's give that a try. As shown in the screen, we are unable to list the C drive directory on the 10.10 .10 IP address, which is the DC. Let's change our session to the Roof Leong session. Now, let's try to list the C drive directory again on the DC IP. We can see that it works now, as we are on the Roof Leong session, who is now a domain admin. Awesome. Now, we should be able to easily transfer the implant over to the DC and execute it. Hmm, that is weird. Let's try to figure the syntax out. Alright, we got it. It appears that we will need to append cmd.exe before the copy command. Now that we have successfully transferred the implant over to the DC on .10, let's execute it. 
we should be able to get a reverse shell from the DC on our sliver C2. Hmm, it appears that it is stuck loading the command. Let's force exit sliver. Let's reconnect to sliver C2 with the client. Our session came from the Windows 10 machine itself. Maybe the execute command that we have executed on the DC.10 went wrong. Let's try to execute the implant on the DC.10 with CME instead. Let's start the SOX5 proxy again. Now, let's fire up CME to execute the implant on .10, the DC. Alright, we got a reverse shell now. This looks better. Let's interact with the new reverse shell. Awesome, we are able to get a shell on the DC. We have successfully compromised the entire Gemini.local domain with Sliver C2 framework. Alright guys, I hope you all have enjoyed the video and content. In this episode, we have definitely explored more on Sliver C2 capabilities. Be sure to check out the references in the video's description, especially the wiki page of Sliver C2 to have a better understanding of the C2 framework. Feel free to comment on the video if you are interested in seeing any attack techniques, tactics or tools in the upcoming videos. Also, please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye.